All right, guys, we're about to get it started. What up, y'all? I'm about to get uh, get into this podcast action right now. All right, let's see. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, I like that deep breath, man. Uh, mm. What's your contract? <laughs> let's do that. What is my contract? It's spontaneous, <laughs> authentic, and no, 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 no. I am, I am. brother. No, we don't say that. Oh, we do? Okay. I am a spontaneous, authentic, and fearless fucking leader. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Awesome. And I'm a powerful, authentic, and confident leader. Yes, you are. Mm. And See, what are you I was like, that way. I'm a powerful, authentic, and giving leader. Yes, yes. you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good times, guys. Okay, cool. Um, all right, brother. Let's let it rip. What's your guys' contract? Let's hear them. <laughs> they don't have one yet. Mm. They get to go. Nah. No, a lot of them are... Uh, um, Devin and Crystal. And oh, Crystal. nice. Okay, cool. And clients that I already know about. Yeah. Cool. You ready? Yeah. Devin right. is on. Uh, he was. I don't know if he's still there. Devin! D, what up, D? Cool. Devin should be here. Who else is no. new? He'll be on the next one. Samya, what up, girl? I'll get him. Miss you. All right, ready? All right, here we All go. Right. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to today's episode. Today, my guest is Dustin Conrad. He is a former addict turned weight loss expert. He's the creator of multi-limb resistance training, and his company is Bands and Body Fitness in Santa Monica. So without further ado, my boy, Dustin Conrad. What's up, my man? What up? I love (laughs) that. That was like a perfect intro. Absolutely. Well, well, dude, we made it, man. It's Mm -hmm. it's what we create Mm -hmm. together, right? Co-create. Yep, I love it. That's what it's it's about. So um, what's new, man? What's going on? Uh, Not much. You know, just working on myself, working on my life, working on my business. You know, the way that I feel uh, life life grows in that way you know yeah that's the way i feel life life expands you got to keep yourself bit business life all balanced right on i love it my man um so just to give you guys some background and we'll obviously go into more detail about that man um you know so you, mm-hmm. got, you got a lot going on but i know what you mean it's a little little taste right there but um just to give you guys a little background on how i met dustin uh, i met him through a transformational workshop um that's run out of la that we've done and it was uh, super powerful for both of us. But I remember I clicked with them on the first day. Mm-hmm. Remember we were yeah, chatting? Yeah, yeah. Because we're both, uh, obviously we're both into fitness. And I was like, oh, hey, what's going on, man? We just, yeah, man. Just kind of, yeah, yeah, we yeah. connected and clicked right away. It was uh, it was super cool. And then we did the extended uh, program. It for was months. long. <laughs> it was long, man. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, he has become a very good friend. He's like a brother to me now. It's, it's crazy the bonds we build mm-hmm. from the people in there. Love oh, you, man. Yeah, I love you, man. And love it. Um, cool. So, uh, when I asked Dustin what his topic was today, um, he said his topic is living with an open heart and powerful soul. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean by that? Mm. Why, why did you pick that? Why did that come up? Um, yeah. So yeah, let me just see what comes up with that. Cause it was kind of a title that just, you know, went through me, but, um, living with an open heart for me means being accessible to your emotions and connecting people on an emotional level rather than a superficial, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's your day going? You gotta go a little bit deeper. What are you up to? How's your life? You know, living with an open heart to me is um, being receptive and available to hear and hold space for people. Um, The powerful soul part, that kind of came to me because, let's see what comes up about that. Um, You know, I love the word power. I love the 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 idea of having this unlimited potential and power that we have access to and I feel like combining that with the soul like your DNA of who you are someone who's courageous and self-disciplined gets shit done and um, and gives to others you know I feel that is a definition of a powerful soul mm, I like it my man yeah it's a uh, it's crazy I guess living with an open heart I definitely resonate with that would you say that before you know all the work we've done on ourselves that you weren't living with an open heart I would say I was a lot better off than others, um, but still way behind. And I thought I was um, uh, this high above the norm of society, but when I <clears throat> went through this transformation program, I realized that um, you know, seeing how other people were able to open up, everyone was closed off, but they were able to open up a lot quicker than I was, I realized that my um, closed offness went a lot deeper, went a lot deeper than um, what I had originally thought. So yeah, I would say it definitely has changed. You know, I got two tattoos to symbolize really like what has been integrated in me. One is like penetrate, it's a sword penetrating a heart going into a stone, like the the sword from the stone and penetrating my heart, giving me the ability to actually cry, to actually hold space for someone, to be affected by people, to be with them and be with them with love. And then the other one is a sword piercing through a, a flower, which is to me, it symbolizes 
penetrating the image, you know, which is really um, a virus running through a society. And some people have it way deeper than others. And I know that I really have done things in my life, my childhood, which I didn't realize really now um, solidified this deep identity and protective reputation thing that it's been hard for me to kind of not destroy, but to, um, to acknowledge that it's there. It is there. But to, at the same time, to move powerfully through it and take those contrary actions and those stretches that go deeper out into the world and out of my comfort zone and, you know, help to reshape this new groove of a person. So, mm. yeah, that's kind of how those two spoke with me. Okay, I like it, man. Um, you know, you had mentioned in the beginning when I was like, what's going on? You're like, I'm just, you know, I'm working on my life and myself. You know, it's very clear. Obviously, we went through the same thing. So mm -hmm. we've both done mm -hmm. some deep work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. So... You know, when I asked you the question, um, how did you kind of uh, overcome those things? Or I didn't ask you that, but that's what I want to know. What did you do specifically seeing where you were mm -hmm. to not being where you are now? What have you done personally? You said, I've been doing a lot of work. So mm -hmm. what specifically have you done well, to really open your heart? Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, for sure, the transformation program that a, a, a lot of us went through. Um, uh, but aside from that, I have a variety of different practices that keep me in check and keep me aligned and keep me progressing. And some of those are, you know, developing a breathwork practice every morning, waking up and breathing with a very um, intense breathing pattern technique that your mind does not want to engage in at that time in the morning, especially if you're not a morning person. You know, you wake up and you're breathing nice and slowly so that to then change a breathing pattern from that to... <sighs> It's against the grain. It does not feel comfortable, but it does have that element of contrary action and stretching and doing the opposite of what I want to do and something that I know is beneficial. So having a breathwork practice combined with affirmations and gratitude and love, you know, um, excla exclamations that I sometimes say in my head or even out loud, um, those things I feel reverberate in my brain throughout the day. They remind me to push out of my comfort zone. They remind me to communicate with people. They remind me to compliment strangers, give to people, to be the best I can be. Um, otherwise, if I just wake up and go through my day without doing affirmations, I kind of can let get lost. But I have developed some practices that you know continuously um, are ingrained so much that I now have access to them. But I definitely know if I set those goals and those reminders, those affirmations each day, I 100% am more likely to um, engage in them. You know, when complimenting people and, and raising my hand and interacting and approaching people is a big one for me. You know, one that I struggle with and one that I have overcome a lot because I've been taking the actions that are uncomfortable and, you know, and risking that reputation, you know, knowing that I can be rejected or confronted in a weird way or um, discounted in some way. And the discount is just a built up identity that is being. Uh, wounded in some way so yeah what I'm hearing you say habits to create awareness yes yes exactly habits and then the and then back to the breathing technique you know that's a habit that continues throughout the day because it evokes this sense of being able to have a more awareness of my breath a more deeper breath and that's part of actually our training program as most of you guys out there know um, we have a breathwork practice, not just as like a mindset focus, start your day point, but also from a fitness standpoint of regulating your stress levels and, um, uh, you know, reducing your cortisol, um, uh, uh, release, you know, which is a stress related hormone that produces fat. So, um, it has a ton of benefits. So yeah, all those habits, all those habits. Yeah. It's all good. Ozzy, it doesn't matter. It's, it's super chill. Yesterday when, um, she was like, oh no, my phone, and I was like, hey, it's all good. Yeah, you can burp and fart, whatever. Yeah, dude, seriously, We're yeah. We're just being real yeah, here. It, it really doesn't matter, yeah, because... This is reality. Well, yesterday, I, when I interviewed my friend, we were like, it was out in Santa Monica. You guys ever been to the Spitfire Grill? Oh, yeah. It's oh, freaking yeah. awesome. It's yeah. a super nice, like, just little restaurant right next to the airport, mm -hmm. but, but we were out in the patio, and, like, the waiter was coming through and stuff, so it's all, yeah, oh, cool. it's all... It's all good. You know. Yeah, yeah. Just let it flow and let it unfold how it wants to. You know, that's how yeah. perfection happens. When you release the expectation of perfection, that's when it can. That's what it's about, yeah. man. I heard a good quote the other day. Um, God, I'm like, I'm so, I'm such a geek when it comes to words and I quotes love and stuff. That. Oh, yeah. And, and, well, thanks, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, but the the quote was by uh, Hal Elrod, um, he's the author of The Miracle Morning, which I read. You know, I've been doing some of that stuff lately. And he said, "Give up being perfect for being authentic." Mm. And I was like. Ooh. Drop the mic on me. I Another like, mic buddy. drop quote is that place <laughs> on those same lines is uh, give up being uh, liked 
by everyone to be loved by some. Mm, mm. I love that, man. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems to be a similarity. Uh, it's interesting when I, um, you know, I interview everyone. I guess it's just like the people that I'm around like is like attracts like we're all in the kind mm-hmm. of the same mindset. But you know, with you, I guess what comes up for me, Dustin, what I want to ask you is, sure. what do you feel is your strongest attribute? Hmm. I love that you just asked me that question. So one of the <laughs> one of the things that we I recently oh, added to <laughs> this is a great example of how um, uh, you know people say, oh, the transformation programs or transformational work. Like I go to a lot of meditation classes. Yeah, they're band aids or they just you know make you feel amazing for a little bit. No. This is things that I've taken and applied in the real world. Like now we have a hugging element in our business. So we, all, we hug all our clients, whether they're sweaty and smelly or not. And, uh, you know, that's just a huge thing. That. The way that we, I connect with my clients is way different. Um, the third thing I was going to say is something related to whatever the question you just asked was. <laughs> well, I asked what your, your best attribute is. The best attribute. So then the other thing that we've added is um, question of the day. So we get to kind of, and, and the exact question that I asked was, what's your fucking favorite thing about yourself? I love it. This was last week, you know, the question. And, um, so do you so answer? What is your yeah, what is mine? Your mine is definitely my inappropriate sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, hundred fucking percent. I love it. But um, hearing other people's and helping them sometimes, like I don't know. And you know, I work at this big rehab, and a lot of them, you know, I relate to this struggle with self esteem issues, and I don't know what the best quality of myself. And I'm like, what do people say that they like about you? Oh, well, people tell me that I'm funny, that I'm giving. There you go. That's it right there. That can or, you love those aspects yourself? Can you love those? Can you love that fact about you that you're a giving person? There you yeah. go. And I guess, you know, two things come up for me when you say that. You know, when people say, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, and then you ask them, well, what do other people say? Mm. I'd invite them to, like, ask yourself, like, what, what if will, you didn't know? Or what, what if you did know? Well, what does mm. it matter what anyone else says? What are you feeling? Mm. What is something that you do like mm. about yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one thing. And I guess the other thing is, is, isn't it interesting how for some people it's hard to just say one thing they like about themselves? Yeah. Like that level of self oh, love. Well, that lifts them all. That's yeah. like, oh my yeah. God, like, how can, why can I not just say, I really like how, you know, um, I'm super diligent and I can sit down and study for like two hours and mm-hmm. I'm good at that. You know, is it, isn't it interesting how it's, for some of us, it's hard. And, you know, I relate. I'm no different. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel that everybody on some level suffers from. You know, self worth issues, self confidence, mm-hmm. self esteem, the doubt. It's it's normal. I mean, mm-hmm. we're all humans. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, why do you think that is? Why do you have to feel that people have can have difficulty admitting the positive qualities about themselves? Mm. Well, definitely a self esteem issue. And my theory, or I really feel this is not a theory. This is fact, in my opinion. <laughs> I guess it is a theory, then. It's <laughs> but good. um. Uh, is that, you know, um, what leads to this is it's a constant um, breaking of your word. So with regard to self-discipline, every okay. time you set your intention, you commit to something. You're not committed, actually. You, 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 have, you have an intention for something to happen, and the next day you wake up and you're like, I don't feel like it, or whatever it is. And there's repeated successions of this not feeling like this breaking your word. And a breaking of your word is a complete disrespect to yourself. Mm. And when you completely do that, your self-esteem dwindles, and then you become a person who doesn't love themselves because they're constantly you know, negating themselves and they don't even trust themselves. They can't trust right. their self to say something and take the fucking action and do it, you know? So that's beautiful, man. That's that's so spot on to commit to your word and yeah. follow through because... Otherwise it destroys it, yourself. It, it destroys it. Yeah, you're telling yourself, oh, I couldn't do it. I knew it. You proved yourself right. I you knew it. Up Confirmation. Deal, right? Confirmation. So what are, let me ask you this then. What are some things that you do personally to build your own self-confidence and your own self-esteem? Oh, well, definitely, well, like I was saying, the contrary action thing of pushing out of my comfort zone. I always say to everyone, and myself included, that you can't regrain a new, um, I don't want to say we're trying to change ourselves, but the goal is to enhance yourself and be the highest and best self you can be. And, um, gosh, I lost my train of thought, but hold on, let me re- not get off this derail and go into it. It's a yes it. moment. It is mm-hmm. a yes moment. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, uh, tell, tell me again what I was just saying or what we are talking about. Oh, I asked you what are some things that you do personally, and uh, you talked about going against the grain mm-hmm, and starting going in the breath. Exactly, way. exactly, exactly. Hey, right now, even before we go, take a deep breath. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, because yeah. you got a lot of knowledge to share, mm-hmm. and I noticed this yesterday uh, with my other friend that I had. You, you, you got a lot to share, yeah. and it will all come out. There's a, there is no, no rush. rush. I love that. Yeah, you're now I lost what I was going to say. Just yeah, no, so what I was going to say is the highest and best self thing and the contrary action thing. Um, what I, the, the, oh, the key point I was going to say is that you can't regrain a new, a new or a more enhanced version of yourself by doing the same things that your old self wants to. Every time you go against the grain of what your old self wants to do, which is sleep in, not go to social events, self-sabotage, not keep your commitments, Every time you do that, you detract from it. But every time you go against the grain and you do those things that you know you should but you don't want to, you regroup and you create this new, more powerful soul, like we were talking about, the powerful mm-hmm. person. And that's how I feel. That's what I do. And the uh, specific things are like acts of compliment. Sometimes I go out, I'll go on a run, or I'll go um, for on a walk, and I'll just walk by and I'll compliment people oh dude those are dope shoes oh i love your shirt man mm-hmm. or you know um uh damn you have great eyes or wow like um uh you wow you just like did an awesome backflip or or pull up or something like holy shit did you just do like 20 pull- you know building people up that's one of the ways that i feel is a contrary action is a um what do you say act as if kind of thing where you regrain your 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 you integrate these aspects by really um living them and um you know and continuously doing them so experiencing them that's mm-hmm. what it is yeah i like it yeah it's um have you ever heard of the uh five second action rule no but i would assume that it has something to do with if you don't take action in five seconds you probably won't exactly that's mm-hmm. it's more or less what it is i, mm-hmm. I was listening to um uh, like a short uh, video the other day on a really good resource I found randomly. It's called Goalcast, mm-hmm. and I've been watching all these videos. They're amazing. Anyways, um, I can't remember the who exactly the speaker was, but she said that you have five seconds mm-hmm. before, before you doubt before you talk yourself out of something. Shit. So it's to just go, just go. Mm-hmm. And if you don't do it within five seconds, all of a sudden you're gonna start telling yourself the stories, yes. right? Yes. And so yes. I, you know, the moral of the story there is, you know, act. Mm. Just act, mm. like just go. Hell yeah! And uh, you know, I know that's one of the things that um, mm. that I personally am working on is you know being in motion. Am I being busy, or am I actually Fearless. moving forward and doing it right? Yeah. So um, oh, well, let me add yeah, one real yeah. quick though. Oh, the, please, uh, go ahead. You know, you were saying um, that five second rule. Another practice that I've done is I sit down next to someone, right? And I'm like, fuck, I should have, you know, introduced myself to this person. I'm like, well, now it's too late. It's going to be weird. But those are all these rigid guidelines and rules Story. that are set in place. And I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm going to just go ahead and reset, take this now, yes, new moment, and say, what's up? Hi, how are you? What, how's your day going? And then engage in this person. Absolutely. So that's another contrary action or regrooving. And Were you gonna say something? Yeah, Ozzy wanted to put. Yeah, we have our friend Ozzy here with us as well, who I'm also interviewing, which I'm really excited about. But you said you had a quote you wanted yeah, to share. Yeah, what came to mind for me is the definition of insanity, which is doing something mm-hmm. over and over, expecting, expecting different, different results. results. And and that would speak to that, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. So we we mm-hmm. go insane unless mm-hmm. we shift into take a into pop of that. I love it. That's uh. Mm. Can you guess it? Is it? Hold on. I I know this. I'm I'm a, definitely an essential oil and um. I see that. I I'm an look. essential oil and crystal guy. It's so funny. I was gonna ask you about that. It's interesting. I feel like I know a a lot of our team really well, but there are so many things that I learn so much more as I'm doing these interviews oh, too. For sure. Like I know your spiritual guide, but then to see your crystals and like your salt lamp and mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I don't. Um, first of all, before I digress, I don't. I don't know the scent of that. What is it? Ling ling. It's a flower. Oh, I, all right. Yep. And what's what does it do? For its scientific name, Kananga adorata. Mm. Mm. So what are the properties of y- ylang ylang? Well, ylang. what it does to you is it enhances your libido. So we're gonna be super horny. In a- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have no idea what this. I don't need to be no. any more horny. Than I have <laughs> friends i want to introduce you to him he actually just got out of a really long relationship he, so he, 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 he may need some time but for some reason i had this vision today <laughs> of like you meeting him so yeah anyways. i am single 
Guys, he's saying that. Government? No, 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 no. That's Lester like, just joined. Hi, Lester. What's up, Lester? Oh, beautiful. What up? So I guess that, that's what I want to know. Um, I want to know about your spirituality, Dustin. Mm, okay. So tell me your extent of what you've explored in your, your spirituality. Um, too many coincidences, too many coinciding events that are... Uh, magnetically attracted together for me to deny that there's something that is influenced and um, an underlying law that's happening um, that you can manipulate in some way. I feel weird saying that, but I feel that's true. And um, my law of life is this. It's um, detachment plus intention equals manifestation. And what that means is you have to be, you don't have to be, but what happens if you are detached from the outcome of whatever thing that you are seeking, um, like me living here, for example, uh, when I first applied here, I was rejected. And I was, when I first applied here, I was obsessively like, oh my God, I can't, I found this building, like it came out of nowhere. I didn't even know it existed. I literally was looking at high rises all over on uh, beachfront high rises. Long Beach. I was even thinking of going to Long Beach. Even, there was nothing about this building that came up. I one day was walking from Venice and I passed it and I was like, I need to live there. The mm. need, the attachment was so fierce. I, when I turned my application in, it was rejected. I was like, what? Then when I moved in again, uh, or when I applied again, um, they, I had to wait like two weeks and they weren't giving it to me. I was so, like, I had the intention. I was like, I'm going to live there. I know it. It may happen now or it may happen in a couple months or I'm going to do whatever I have to do. However, I'm detached from what the outcome might be. Mm. And, you know, I even ate a month's rent at my other place down the street in Venice. And because I was just like, I don't know if it's going to work out. I'm just going to, you know, and, and it worked out and things like that, like major everything from that band I was in playing in all over uh, LA County Fair and all these like magical coincidences that just happened, um, came into my life. Like I, I don't want to, I mean, I do want to brag. I do want to list them all, but I, it would take hours. That would be a whole nother, that would be another Facebook live, <laughs> but there's uh, so many coincidences in, in my life, but I will say that they coincide, they're coincidences because they do coincide with what my intention is. And then at the same time, being having that level of detachment from what the outcome might be is what I feel um, creates these magical events that happen. And there's been so, so I've been so blessed with everything. My work, where I live, this little guy, everything, even this little guy, like how I got him, you know. And um, yeah, you just set your intention and you have this anything is possible mindset. And really it creates the space for anything is possible. Mm. One last thing I'll say is when I first started training and I was used to work in video for production company uh, that did uh, commercials for drug rehabs and <clears throat> I did sales calls and I um, just well A was scared of rejection and B just fucking did it and detached from the outcome I, my, my goal was to share the power and the love of what we were offering we're, we're a specialist that deals with capturing the essence the emotion the love about your facility would do you want that or do you want someone who just does action videos or whatever you know, and we got clients that way and, you know, and I just stayed in that anything is possible. People would say no and I would put them on a callback list. I'd call them a week later and all of a sudden we had all these different contracts set up. Mm. So, you know, the anything is possible mindset is really my spirituality. I don't have a big religious belief, um, but at the same time I don't deny that because I know that there is something, some, some sort of energy or some sort of underlying, you know, um, thing taking place that's manipulatable, I guess if that's a word, something. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it, I'm hearing um, just kind of like universal trust. Universal trust, you're living with intention, you detach, but you don't identify with one particular ideology. Mm -hmm. You just kind of, it all, it's all together. It, all Absolutely, I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't not believe in a, a God, um, uh, but I don't also believe in a God. Um, I definitely don't believe in any kind of like intelligence, but I do believe that there's so much rhythm and energy in this world, and now they're uncovering all this other shit about quantum physics and um, uh, uh, atoms and uh, you know atomic particles and shit, and it's you know it just confirms these beliefs of these underlying laws, this underlying rhythm that if you act a certain way, you you send out these vibrations and then attracts life to you. So, yeah. I believe in the law of attraction. That's my spirituality. That's really it. <laughs> so all that fucking talk I spent, whatever, like 10 minutes, it's the law of attraction. That's it. I do firmly believe 100% in my heart of that law of attraction, like without a doubt. 
So that's my my religion. Absolutely, yeah. as do I, my man. I love it. So you know, another thing I guess that that comes up for me that I want to ask you is, you know, you've you've done well for yourself. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. you're yeah. just about to expand your business. It's been growing. You've done well. You're successful with it. So I'd like you to speak on that. Tell us about your business and where you're going. And you know, also I invite you to talk about what it's all good. Okay, going. I want you to talk about what you feel your biggest key to success was on getting your mm. look at that 222 Whoa. right intention wow. and that's my background how crazy is that so talking about spirituality guys um right intention is the background yeah on his computer <laughs> yeah on my on my computer my background is right intention everything is like this it, it, it always is now when you're open and receptive and looking for it yeah absolutely and otherwise uh, you live in this world where everything just happens randomly and you don't have any appreciation for it because it's just random right yeah but yeah it was crazy guys um I hit my uh, enter button so my computer fell asleep. And yeah, my background says right intention and it just happened to be 222 and I turned it on. So mm-hmm. talking about spirituality, the synchronicity, man, it's how, it's how it is. Mm-hmm. But um, back to uh, you and your business. So yeah, tell us one about your business. And then two, I'm interested to know for people out there who are starting their own business, what do you feel uh, or what advice can you give them, you know, your experience mm-hmm. on why you've built your business to such a success? Mm-hmm model others get a coach that is in line with whatever modality or business line you're in um is the hugest thing but the anything impossible mindset is the even bigger like i always detach from uh if a client is going to sign up and i just will go into each session i want to give my fucking heart and soul and all the knowledge i have over 10 years of a lot of research and you know uh, learning and integrating to this person whether they sign up or not and if they don't sign up I want to leave them with something that you know that is like wow they just like totally took the time even though I didn't sign up you know so I think that in itself is the big best way of sales approach the second thing is our program which I was you know kind of uh, going through the script thing in the beginning practicing is that um, I I, um, I preface the program uh, as being uh, very difficult so I'm going to interrupt you right there. For the people that are listening on the podcast, mm. um, they didn't see the Facebook Live video. So mm. tell us about what mm. it is that you do. Yes. Tell us about your system. Yes, yes. So um, there's two things. There's the class, um, which is a format I'm trying. Uh, I'm not trying. I'm and a getting, class of what? It's a, called the Bands and Body Fitness class, which u- utilizes multi-limb resistance training with resistance bands. It's basically a... Um, it's a very innovative way of working multiple muscle groups simultaneously inside of resistance bands. Um, in the class format, which I'm going to be getting into gyms as like a feature, you know, kind of like, you know, a gym would have a spin class, a body pump, a yoga, Zumba, and they'd have a bands and body. Um, the other aspect is our, my main offer, which is our three month program, um, called the BOD transformation and it's spelled B-A-W-D which basically stands for breath work activity water and diet hmm. um and i love that yeah that's clever yeah. man that's awesome yeah. and it's based around the four earth elements of uh you know uh, uh air being the breath that's gonna you know sustain you and deepen and regulate your cortisol levels um fire being the activity that's gonna burn the fat away with the multi-limb training uh water being the liquid that's gonna create all the electrical conductions in your brain chemistry in your body your muscular contractions and detoxify and flush out fats and then um, D is being the, uh, the earth is the diet, obviously, which is a, just basically um, restructuring, rebuilding your digestive system so that it uh, alleviates any bloating, inflammation, and um, uh, makes your body burn fat more efficiently. So that's basically the approach. And there's a lot more into it. I, I want to get super depth in depth about that. But um, basically, it's, uh, it's a very different approach, and it's a high level of accountability. So we require each person has to do a daily recap every day. They have to do coaching calls. They, or they don't have to. They get to. <laughs> they get to do coaching calls every week. Um, they get to uh, um, work out five times a week. They also get to restructure their diet and uh, adhere to this um, new approach of, um, uh, I would say, cleansing and rebuilding the digestive system. Mm. And so it's a lot of stuff. And you know, um, and presenting it that way, like, look, are you, it's really designed for someone who's really ready to give, like, you know, hundred and ten percent. Is that you? If not, no worries. There's tons of workout programs there with awesome nutrition tips. This is not one of them. <laughs> right. This is a hard program, but it's gonna get you fucking crazy results mentally, physically, and in your actual external life. 
I love, yeah, I love how you build that commitment into them, into it because really, if you want to have success with any program, it really comes down to your level of commitment, regardless of what the the vehicle mm -hmm. is. So I and love how accountability is the yeah, hugest. Uh, and I love how you package that together, <clears throat> and it's you. like that's in there. So that's mm -hmm. awesome, my man. So kind of touching, you know, you you had spoken on it a little bit earlier, you know, when we first introduced the topic, but. You know, you said living with an open heart and a powerful soul. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing that today? How mm -hmm. are you living with an open heart? How are you living with a powerful soul? Mm -hmm. How are you using that? And then what's something that you can say to people listening out there to live with an open heart and mm -hmm. a powerful soul? Living with an open heart for me is loving, is uh, just being out there, being a, a, a stand for love, being, being a... Uh, um, a space for love, um, connection, hugging, complimenting, building people up, um, transforming them, you know, in, empowering them with words, with suggestions, with uh, my knowledge that I've uh, uh, accumulated and integrated in my own life. Um, powerful soul uh, is uh, taking action that's powerful, that's outside of your comfort zone, that's outside of your old personality to regroup and recreate this new personality. Um, and things that I do to do that are, you know, like I was saying, the affirmations and the um, contrary action things of uh, getting out of my comfort zone and doing the things that I don't want to do but know I should do. And um, that's how you create the new person, in my opinion. Mm, I love it. Yeah. So, I'm, I guess what comes up for me now is I'm interested to know, you know, the journey that we've all been on. And when I say we all, I mean, you know, the, the same team that we went through everything with. What prompted you to start going to this and like going into self improvement and you know what opened you up to it? Yeah, well, so yeah, this is what inspired the the title ultimately because um, the podcast is called Open Heart Surgery and I have had open heart surgery, as some of you guys know. Um, and what uh, what what brought me to this direction of seeking self improvement and enabling others through fitness to love themselves as well and myself was that open heart surgery that I had as a result of drug addiction. Um, I was on completely other side of the fitness realm, <laughs> you know, um, in all ways, but definitely in intoxifying my body with drugs and alcohol and crystal meth particularly, and ultimately I had open heart surgery as a result of that. And, um, you know, and then the, a different kind of opening of the heart took place after that. Um, and I really dedicated myself to uh, to becoming my highest and best self and then empowering others to do so. And then fitness was a big part for me to really give myself that gift of self-improvement and self-care. And I, um, you know, naturally wanted to help others achieve that as well. And I just felt like it was so aligned with that line of service and transformation, mental and physical that I feel like that's kind of what drew me there, you know? And, <clears throat> you know, yeah, that's basically it, yeah. So, I'm gonna ask your permission first. I'm, you um, have my permission for anything. I, I know, I, I already know I did, but just mm -hmm. out of respect, right? I I'm gonna ask that. you, I ask, you know, I just wanna ask permission. Um, I wanna know, you know, at the bottom, when you were at the bottom of your drug addiction, mm -hmm. when was the rock bottom, and what was the turning point for you? And so anybody that's listening to this right now that might be in mm. that position, what was that point for you where you hit rock bottom, you knew it was, and it was a turning point, and what clicked for you, and how can they move forward? Mm. What advice can you give to them? Well, obviously rock, the rock bottom was the open heart surgery, but the thoughts that were in line with that, because even as that was taking place, I still had such a disregard and disrespect for my own life that I really didn't. I won't say that I, I wanted to live, but I didn't, I was kind of indifferent. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to survive, survive this surgery. And that self-loathing and self, uh, loathing, self-worthlessness, you know, um, was really what I felt, you know, um, ultimately was I was medicating and I realized that. And ultimately what happened was I, um, uh, I, I was forced to go to 12-step meetings and I, I resisted because all the religiosity of it, but I heard people speaking a language of overcoming fear and regaining power and um, uh, getting out of their fucking comfort zone and doing the things that I dreamed of, you know, like at the time was approaching strangers and uh, 
um, you know, f not, uh, being fearless with rejection and getting myself out there and loving and all these things. And it inspired me to know that it was possible. I heard therapists say it, but it didn't mean anything because I didn't know that they had came from my depths of darkness to this new depth of courage and power and open heart and powerful soul, you know? Mm. There was something I was going to say back in the other thing, but I can't recall what it was. Darn. No, it's oh, yeah. You know what it was? It was that you were saying, what tips could I offer also? Um, you know, I, you know, I'm talking right now. I'm in a great mood. I'm with my people, people that I love just so deeply. I, I, it's Friday. Everything feels great. But I, it's not always like this. I do go through deep depressions. And one of the things that I've realized, there, there's, there's these, uh, let's see if I can recall it, but there's three particular things, and I'm going to do a Facebook Live on this, that really can propel you out of that pain and suffering and depression and self-loathing for me is what it is. Um, and, and those are when I have a task hanging over my head that I'm not doing because I don't feel like it continuously. Like for me, it's making videos and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. I keep denying that. Like we're talking about that, that self-rejection. Um, and then the second thing is I'm not socializing enough, I'm not reaching out, I'm not connecting with people. And uh, um, that's a huge one. If I can call two people a day, I can get, I can keep that. The human connection is so important for your well-being. And the third one, if I can recall it, was, let's see, there was a self-discipline. The Oh, yeah, and it's structure. Having structure. If I have op uh, an overwhelming amount of time, I'm not going to get shit done. I'm going to get overwhelmed. But if I have every hour mapped out with power of, like, I'm going to do breath work here. I'm going to do uh, calls here. I'm going to do... Um, so play, practice my guitar. I'm going to do this or that or the other. And I have it structured. And those three things, if I can know I can shift out with if I do those things so that's awesome yeah, man. That's awesome. yeah I, I, and I completely agree with that I think you're spot on you know so I you know what I'm hearing you say is you know your three tips when you're feeling depressed when you're feeling down mm. is one have a vision yeah. know what you're doing mm -hmm. it's like okay I don't want to do this but you know what I'm gonna do it so mm -hmm. it's the whole thing like uh, mm. you know I don't answer the devil's playground right and then step two is to connect with people like you said to mm -hmm. be around people that you and just talk to like mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be anything crazy but just be around someone get that connection and the third like you said is to have the structure yeah then and that kind of almost plays into step one just a little bit right mm -hmm. is to make sure you're you're doing something right so we have a purpose yeah yeah I, I read this book you ever read a book um called drive by Daniel pink maybe it sounds familiar so he just basically there's some principles that he talks about on what drive is and what we need he talks about mm. um flow state and all these things but mm. There's a few principles in there that kind of resonate with all of us as human beings, I feel. And he talks about how having purpose is one of them. Mm. Like, we as human beings, we need to have, have a purpose. purpose. If we don't have a purpose, and that goes along with, like, what's your vision? Like, what are you trying to create right now? Where do you see your life at the end? What is your purpose? And as long as you look at that purpose mm -hmm. and you stick mm -hmm. to that, everything, that's your north star. So when you get lost, you're feeling down. Say, so it's all good. I feel really shitty. But you know what? I'm still working towards that. It's all good. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, I think spot on. One of the most important ones, like you said, is um, it's just human connection too. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we feel we're so alone. It's huge. We've yeah, got no one to talk about and stuff. No isolation. one to talk to. It's just not true. We have so many people. So many. You know. And we and close out to it too. Yeah. They're not in our accessible yeah, in our minds a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And and then another thing I was gonna say to caveat off of that was um. Oh gosh, you were talking about um the your what were you saying? What was the last thing you were mentioning? I was talking about vision, structure, uh, how we need purpose. Yeah, the purpose. Purpose. Mm -hmm. So this is a great and interesting interesting takeaway um with regard to success and self improvement. Um, is my purpose of expansion of bands and body to make money, become a celebrity trainer? and all these other things that go along with that and live where I want to live and travel. Yes, there is that, but it is the, the um, prioritized purpose to help people and to create something that's fun and unique that people can fall in love with in the same way that I do. I need to know that that purpose is, uh, is priority over the others. Otherwise, you will set yourself up for failure. If your purpose is to just make money, to just be a celebrity, to just get traveling in awesome homes and cars you will fail your purpose needs to be love service and the last one was whatever i just said <laughs> it was a, it was a love service and the most important one jesus was love service and um 
purpose. And uh, or why? Yeah, but the yeah, the, but the uh, the love, the service, and the purpose that's beyond the superficial. Yeah. It's the it's the it's the yeah, the giving. And all like that. your core principle. Know why you're doing mm-hmm. this. Oh, right. Oh, the, it is is the actual content of why whatever service or thing you're giving. Like for example, mine is that it's fun and it's unique, and I want people to love it the way that I love it. You know, you sharing. You know, if your purpose is you know. Um, your purpose has to be something that is uh, um, that you're passionate about and that others can be passionate about and enthusiastic and therefore enrolled in your vision. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I guess uh, to sum that up or how I'm hearing it is you have to have, <laughs> ironically, the right intention on why you're doing something mm-hmm. and then it has mm-hmm. to be something that vibes with, whoa, 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 don't, don't, mm-hmm. don't eat my beads, dude. Hey. <laughs> this cat's trying, trying to eat my mala. Oh man, <laughs> you said he loves textures, man. You, Everything. You uh, you warned me, um, <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, going back to it, yeah, having the right intention, mm-hmm. knowing what is your real reason. If it's to get money and the fame and stuff, you're gonna fail miserably, mm-hmm. or when you get it, you're still gonna feel empty. Mm-hmm. So you've got to have a deeper reason why you're doing this, which is also kind of like deeper a deeper reason. Yeah, which is exactly. always a guiding principle for me. Um, and then, like you said, I think it's so important. It's um, it's the passion. You have to love what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I know you you deal with so many people every day, and you get to know them. And you know, you and I are in the same capacity. So it's Ozzy as well, coaching. Mm-hmm. And at least in my experience as a coach and um, as a trainer, when I'm working with people, and just in general, I come across so many people that they really like are super unhappy with their lives, and they really just the hate. Story. They hate what they're doing for work, their story, relationships, yeah. and it's like, guys, if you don't you know, and that's what I'll say to all you guys out there. If you're in a place that's tough, I mean, we're all human beings, but you've got to understand that it's your choice. You have a choice no matter what. If you don't think you do and you're stuck, it's that's just a story you're telling yourself. No one and nothing can force upon you what you don't want. It's your choice in the end. Mm-hmm. And that's just, I feel out of all this, uh, you know, where I met Ozzy and Dustin, this, all this leadership training, the transformational work we've done, that's probably the most important or one of the top two or three lessons I've taken away is that everything is a choice. Mm-hmm. Everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and, um, it's, choosing it, your unhappiness, it, choosing your occupation, it's your, a choice. your success. Yeah. Yeah. And choosing your partner, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you're choosing to love somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, there's no one perfect person out there. It's a choice. Relationships are work. So it's interesting. It really goes with anything. But yeah, yeah. yeah to kind of um, add on to what you were saying. But, that's crazy. So, you know, that being said, uh, there's three questions I'd like to ask everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've been through a lot. You have a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, and you know, here you are. You're, you know, you're you're super successful. You're only going up. You know yourself better than ever now, and you're only improving. Mm-hmm. So, in all your experience and the work you've done on yourself, what is the most important lesson that you've learned in life so far that you'd like to share with everyone listening? Um, two things. Anything is possible, and who gives a fuck? <laughs> mm. Really, literally, like, who mm. gives a fuck what people think about you? Who gives a fuck what they say that's against your vision? Absolutely. Stay in your truth and your independence and know that anything is possible and go for it. Absolutely. Just being, what I'm hearing is being authentic, man. Who gives a shit? Like, doesn't matter. Be authentic, dude. Mm-hmm. Who cares? You want to dance in the street like no one else? Who cares? Do mm-hmm. it. If you want to do that, do that. Be you, right? Yeah. These guidelines that society sets up for us, you know, restrict us and cause us to stifle our self-expression and who we are and want to be. You know, you can't dance naked in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> you know, do it in less rain. No, it comes out. <laughs> legally, you Absolutely. can't. Legally, you can't. And there are things that are legally unacceptable, but and there's things that are socially unacceptable, but those things can be bent and broken, right. you know? And yeah. we need to realize that we can reset and we can engage and we can explore in those ways. Yeah, I think it's a be responsible. Do it, express yourself, but be responsible with yes. it, right? And do it with, yeah, because you don't want to, like, I mean, being naked in the rain when there's ch- children around might not be the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not too good. Yeah. So, uh, well, they'll join you. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, yeah. I know, right? So, uh, the second question I'd like to ask is, you know, uh, where you're at, you know, what you've gone through. Once again, you know, you're a successful guy. What's the best piece of advice you can give uh, for people specifically to your topic? So what's a piece of advice that you can give to people to help mm-hmm. them live with an open heart and be a powerful soul? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, these are good questions because they're reverting back to kind of the, the, the finer principles that I feel came up. 
and one of them is regarding the open heart thing is to find I, I mean I would just recommend you know our, our, this leadership program because that's what broke me open and gave me that connection to my emotion and the ability to cry and sympathize with people but without that you know um, yeah there I mean I really don't know without that but um, because I was so lost in regard to my connection to my emotion however um, find a way find a way that you can open up find a space where it's okay you know for you to cry for you to connect with your emotion to for really I think that the, the tears are really uh, you know a big important importance and uh, especially for men we don't have access to it a lot of them times for our whole entire lives so and living that way you know that I did in my last you know 20 years 25 years of my life is not a life you know it's a disconnected um, and uh, bare bare life Mm. And the powerful soul thing, um, the tool that I would recommend is like we were talking about the contrary action, the getting out of your comfort zone, the setting yourself up with these stretches to stretch beyond love your it, limits. Man. And that's I our company that. logo. Stretch beyond your limits. I love it. Man, that's that's money right there. Yeah, <laughs> out of your comfort zone. That's such an important one too. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last uh, question I want to ask you is what's one tangible tool or action that people can take to help them mm. move forward? Okay, open soul is going to be complementing. Actually, even powerful soul could be, uh, open heart could be, uh, um, the best practice that I would recommend would be um, complementing <clears throat> and or having a affirmation practice where you can try to evoke love. Like, who do I love the most? What aspects of myself do I love the most? I have literally a, a YouTube that shows this process of gratitude then gratitude turned outward to love, then turned inward into self-love, and then visioning. That's a practice that I do and I teach, um, which is one you could do. But uh, So it would be either um, uh, the complimenting, going out and giving love, or going inward and giving yourself love and external love and conjuring, evoking that inner emotion of love. The powerful soul thing... Um, <clears throat> uh, set yourself up. Find out what are the things that you're resisting in life.